All right, back here on Sportsline, we talked off the top of the show about the story with Traylon Burks being absent again from organized team activities today. And this is now a considerable trend, and it's why we continue to talk about it. It's offseason, they're not playing games, and here's your number one pick who's struggling to get on the field. He couldn't get through the very first workout of rookie minicamp, struggled to get through the first couple of workouts in the first week of OTAs, more than a week later, and then here we are in week three, unable to be on the field today. Now, we don't know for a fact, all Mike Vrabel said today was he was unavailable. We don't know for a fact that Traylon Burks unavailable status for today was the asthma struggles, but we know that is what the struggles were early on for him. And whatever it is, you're talking about being out there about 50% of the time right now, at least that we know, and we're not even there every day. And so that's got to be a concern because you need him to learn. You need him to be ready to go to help this team out come the fall. So anyway, we got a chance finally for the first time this offseason to catch up with his position coach, Rob Moore. And here's what Rob Moore had to say about his group. And almost every question was about the rookie, Traylon Burks. So he and I uh, have a relationship from the past. Uh, true pro, really tough, smart, all the things you want in the wide receiver he has. So, um, And he's progressing well, working hard in the training room, doing everything he has to do to get back out here. So I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited that he's here and can't wait to get back out on the field. How are you atta attacking like that process of, of bringing Traylon in and getting him acclimated and getting him good to go? Uh, a lot of different ways, man. Traylon's worked hard, uh, comes in early in the morning, uh, board work, walkthroughs, uh, everything you could think of, mobile cloud. We do it's, it's a lot of different things uh, to try and shorten the learning curve and, and, and uh, get him caught up to speed. A lot of focus on the negative with him, you know, it's just the problems he had starting off. But what are some of the positives that you've been able to get? Uh, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. You know, some of the, you know some of those things that happened were kind of out of his control. Just you know, the kid. He's, you know, he's got asthma. You know what I mean? Those things, you know, uh, happen. Um, but, you know, in regards to, uh, he understands what the expectations are, but I think at the end of the day, it's just really him getting himself immersed in the culture of how we do things here, how we play here, uh, which is different from every player that comes in here from college because we ask these guys to do things that a lot of teams don't ask them to do. So there are some things that, that you like that you've seen. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm excited uh, about Traylon and, and, and what he's going to be able to bring to this football team. He just has to get himself healthy and and, um, and be able to show everybody out here on the field, you know, what he's capable of. What are your expectations for trailing come week one? Week one? Um, to be a contributor. Um, I don't, you don't want to put the pressure on him of saying he's going to be a starter and all those things, but I expect him to be a contributor. Rob, I'm sorry I missed but what was it like trying to get players coming in to understand the way you want to do things the way you think you want to, the way you want to do things right here, and it may be different than how they've done in the past? Well, it's a process. You know, I think, um, you know, and throughout that process, we're fortunate enough to have a bunch of veterans that, that uh, understand the culture, um, and, and these guys understand when they get here, they, they have to fit into that culture, and, and and uh, they learn pretty quickly what the expectations are and, and how to immerse themselves in that. What's his attitude been like as far as willingness to learn and get better? It's been great. It has. It's been great. Um, you know, I think you know, at, at, at the end of the day, um, he's doing everything he can to uh, make sure he shortens that learning curve and, and to be available for this team. With, uh, with a player like Kyle Phillips, what do you like about the skill set that he brings? Anyone's looking for uh, a Really good short area quickness. Uh, got a good football IQ. Understands uh, understands how to fit in the zones and all those all those nuanced things that that or the, the the feel that comes with the game. He seems to have a good natural feel for that. Titans receivers coach Rob Moore. The first question he was asked was about Robert Woods, the free agent signing coming in off of the ACL. Terry talked about his professionalism and his relationship with him. and was very complimentary. The last question was about Kyle Phillips, the fifth round pick out of UCLA and what he's able to do at this point. Every other question was about Traylon Burks and his status. And you, you heard mostly... Rob Moore was very positive about Burks and his work ethic and what he's trying to do and coming in and trying to work hard and be a good teammate and the talent set. And I think we've all seen that. 
What Traylon Burks did in Arkansas was impressive. He looks like a player that can have a lot of success at this league. The problem is, from the outside, is we only get bits and pieces of the offseason program. And you hear the coaches, but they're not going to say anything bad about them to the public. Not now. They're going to try and encourage and be positive all the way through. And that may be the exact fact. But they're not going to say anything negative. And so, from the outside, you just look at what you see on the field. Or the fact that you don't see them all the time on the field. And it's a concern. And it's also a concern because of what the team did before all of this stuff. The trade of A.J. Brown. Losing Julio Jones, although... Julio didn't do a lot for this team last year. But it's a total changing of the guard of what you're expecting at the wide receiver position. And when you then trade up part of the deal with A.J., knowing you got to go get a wide receiver and you get Traylon Burks, well, guess who's the biggest piece of the solution for you long term? It's Traylon Burks and Robert Woods. And you hope a more deep crew after that, led by Nick Westbrook-Akina, but you need Traylon Burks to be a guy, a guy who produces for you. And you, you heard Rob Moore say it there. He didn't want to put on too much pressure for a guy, but he's got to be a contributor. He's got to be a contributor this fall. Too often, Titans draft picks in the recent past have not always contributed right away. Even the guys that didn't have issues like an injury, like Caleb Farley or losing their mind off the field like Isaiah Wilson. They've drafted several guys that weren't necessarily huge factors in the first year or two. And they ultimately became fine players, but they weren't immediate impact players. Traylon Burks needs to be an immediate impact player for the Titans. That's just the bottom line. And that is why all the questions keep coming and all the conversation continues to center around him and his health or now his asthma and what it's going to take to get him on the field day in and day out to try to get him up to speed to be that contributor come this fall. Mike Vrabel also spoke after practice today. A lot of different topics that he was asked about, including right off the top here, a rule change that would have made things difficult on the Titans last year given all of their injuries. But also, he gets a chunk right in the middle about Traylon Burks. And you can tell the head coach not really loving that conversation anymore. Still positive about the player, but not liking talking about everything else that comes with it right now. Here is Mike Vrabel. Mike, no surprise that you all used n most players in any season last year. The NFL owners made the change uh, limiting uh, the re return from IR to eight instead of unlimited as you had last year. Uh, does that maybe put, uh, and they expanded the number of games before you return from three to four. How much tougher does that maybe, you know, once you get into the season, uh, decisions when it comes to health and, you know, you always put a priority on staying healthy, but with the tightened rules on I on IR return, does that make it even more important to be as healthy as possible this year? Well, they're not our rules. They're just the NFL rules, and we try to follow them the best that we can. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, let's see how many guys are going to be out for an extended period of time. We'll have to manage the roster um, like we do every year. That's going to be uh, important. Mike, Caleb was saying how he feels mentally stronger than ever. How, how does that show up um, on a regular basis inside the building? Uh, yeah, I think that's about the only place that it can right now with the, you know, the work that he's doing, you know, just because he really hasn't been tested. Um, but what we're, we're, he's, I think, just really ahead of where he was, obviously, last year mentally. Um, which is a great sign is that he's taking the time in the off season. You know, he was ready to go before we started installing. He wanted an iPad. He's working on his rehab. You know, he was focusing on on things that he could do uh, while he was rehabbing, and that that translated to to a good understanding, of, a very strong understanding of what we're going to be doing. Um, he's been able to get some work in. Um, as you guys can see, that's been limited, but 
You know, that's all we ask them to do is you know focus on the things that they can do. Next time we see you'll be at the mini camp next week. What, what do you, what's left, or what do you want, what are you going to do next week that maybe you hadn't done yet? I guess you'll find out next week, Jimmy. What have you liked about what you've seen so far and what needs to improve? Well, I think we're trying to get into some conditioning. I think there's, you know, been some, some, some days with some heat. Um, you know, we saw us move down here into the red zone, the high red, uh, which is critical. Um, you know, that we, you know, play well on both sides of the football in that area. But we, will, you know, we'll continue to move down into the red zone. Um, always leery of, of that. And, and the speed because the, the distance is, you know, the space is decreased. So without pads on, it's, you know, it's critical that, that we're, we're smart, you know, but also introducing those, those low red concepts on offense and defense. Some picks of, uh, of Jeffrey Simmons at the, the Von Miller camp. You like guys going to, you know, various individual camps like this, whether it's tight end, whether it's defensive line or so forth. You appreciate what they they can gain from those kind of things? I don't know. I haven't been to them, so I wouldn't know what they could gain or what they do. Logan Woodside has had a lot of game reps other than preseason and all. What are some of the things that he's done that's kind of earned your trust and his teammates' trust? Well, he prepares. You know, prepares as the starter. He hasn't had to. Um... But he's got great command of our offense. You know, I think that continues to show. Um, I think his leadership has improved. His ability to get guys, you know, lined up, hold them accountable. Um, you know, but it's di- you know it's different, and we're going to have to give those guys opportunity to compete. Um, you know, in a training camp and, and, and every opportunity that we can here in practice when we, you know, scrimmage. But his his understanding of what we're doing, the details of the play, the progression, uh, getting us in the right protections. You know, that's all been been really really positive. Rob Moore said today that Traylon's been dealing with a setback from asthma. How confident are you that Traylon will get that worked out and be ready to go for the start of the training camp in the preseason? Yep, very confident. You know, I mean, that's got a lot of confidence in in all our players to prepare. And, uh, you know, we got a few weeks, you know, quite a few weeks here before we do go to training camp. Are you surprised by that? Surprised by what? I don't get, I try not to get too surprised, but I mean, I'm sure you guys will disagree. The, but the asthma set back with trailer. No, and that's not, you know, I mean, we, we, we deal with a lot of different things. He just, um, you know, that's something a lot of guys deal with. Again, we've, we've touched on this. Practice yes. today. Is there a specific reason for that? And how do you feel about your first round pick not being out of practice today? He was unavailable. I assume, did you guys know that he had asthma? Is that something that's covered? Um, yeah, there's a there's a long medical history, yeah. Anything else? It, um, Garrett, ask Garrett, did you know a little bit about him, you know, through through Ohio State ties or anything like that? Or? No, I mean, obviously, I, you know, watch him when I can, but we got, we got business to do here. I uh, didn't, you know, been a while since we recruited him, spent some time with him, some good time with him. Um, at the pro day, understand the program that he's come from, and you know he's and the group of young defensive linemen is is, is um, you know positive. And and I mentioned they're all kind of different, right? They all kind of not only look different, they got a different skill set. Um, and so excited to see what those guys can do uh, and the role that they can develop when training camp comes. Mike, when you have a guy like Chig who uh, kind of has all the physical tools. Well, I mean, I think he's doing everything that we're asking him to do. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to, to get some of those reps that you're going to need against another body without pads on. Uh, but we're also going to have to, you know, do a good job and be creative in, in how he, you know, does block and where we put him. I mean, it's just... It's not going to hold up against a 280-pound defensive end. That you know, that's that wouldn't be fair. So, hopefully, we can can continue to, to find ways to, to have him be in there and help us uh, when we do run the football, and then and do some of the things that that his natural skill set would um, lend him to be able to do when we throw the football, which you know is is showing up more and more. Mike Dillon says he wants to win the right tackle job. Do you want him to win this right tackle job? Yeah, I mean, I want every player um, that's competing for something to get it. I mean, he's worked hard. He's put a lot of time in, and he knows that he's going to have to go to training camp and, and earn a spot like like most everybody else. I mean, you know, obviously there are some spots here that 
you know, you'd, you'd feel pretty good about. But, um, you know, Dylan is excited about competing. He hasn't, uh, you know, shied away from it. He's worked hard. Um, so looking looking forward to a to a great training camp with him. How do you view the spring in terms of, you know, the, I guess the balance of installing stuff and specifics, but also versus, you know, culture getting in shape, things like that, like compared maybe even to other teams or even how you did it as a player. What's your overall, I guess, philosophy on, on the, the goal of the spring? Well, it's improvement, it's development. Um, we, we'd asked every player and coach to be willing to make a connection uh, with their with their teammates and with the coaching staff, understanding that you know not everybody's going to be best friends. You're going to have a different relationship with with some others than you will um, you know some some guys. And but just be willing during this time of the year to, to create those you know, connections, uh, be willing to learn, um, be willing to improve. And um, you know I think for the rookies, it, I kind of notice some of this install kind of gets to be a lot. So we've you know, that's why you see some of the, the two-spot stuff is where those guys can can focus on maybe some of the base stuff and, and allow them to develop. I think that there was, you know, once you get into six and seven installs, I, I started to see, you know, a little bit of regression uh, that I thought we were, you know, from where we were. And so they've dialed back, and now they're just able to focus on maybe some of the earlier stuff and, and, and see if uh, they can continue to improve. And then with the veteran guys, we just have to keep, Keep plowing ahead, and then we'll give it—you know—give it to them again once we, once we get to uh, training camp. You that at all? Uh, I mean, I think we do that, you know, based on really each and every week, each and every day, and uh, whatever we did three years ago is going to be different. There's going to be some similarities, and you know, it's the same with training camp and, and through the season. We see where the team is and kind of try to make a decision what's what's best for for them. Along those lines, the last few years, this time of year has been atypical. As you head into mini camp, are you able to remember just how valuable this time is for, for some of the younger guys and rookies to get ready to go? Well, I mean, I, I think it's critical for everybody. I mean, I think that um, spending time with with your coaches and, and your teammates and, and doing stuff, I mean, we, we ran plays to yesterday and today that, that we've scored touchdowns on or defended in the season. You know, to say that those reps don't mean anything, I don't. I don't agree with that. You know, I showed the team numerous examples of stuff that we did in OTAs uh, that we used um, in the season. Mike, how excited are you to get the guys that haven't been here back next week and have the team whole as well? well I mean, I'm excited to coach everybody that comes, and I would imagine most of those guys will come that haven't been here. Um, just because they, they bring, you know, I mean, each of them brings something new and different and exciting and it, you know, I have relationships with them. And, um, you know, so it'll be, it's just more guys adding to, to what we have here and, and the dynamic of, of building a team with different personalities and, and different people and different skill sets. Talking about Logan Woodside out there, what's he shown over the last four years to, you know, have you guys comfortable with him as far as running the system and understanding the way things operate? I mean, I think he just comes in, he competes, and the guys that we've had him compete against, he's outplayed them, outperformed them in training camp because, you know, his understanding of where to go with the football and, and the, the, you know, the audibles, the checks, all, all the different things that go into playing quarterback. Have you talked to Derrick Henry recently or touched base with him about how he's doing this offseason? No, I just usually just check on Instagram. <laughs> What do you think about those videos? I don't check them on Instagram. That was, that was a joke, Emily. Mike Vrabel, a little humor there at the end of it. Not always in a humorous mood throughout the course of the day because of the Traylon Burke stuff. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I don't think there's a ton of alarm at St. Thomas Sports Park yet with this, but they know they need to hit on a first-round pick. And they know that specifically for this season, they need the first-round pick to be good to help them get to where they want to be. So it is vitally important that Traylon Burks figures this out and that is able to get on the field, and they understand that, obviously. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back more from the Titans during OTAs right after this.